on the edge of the Caribbean Sea. The voice of an island has been growing. What started as a whisper hundreds of years ago has grown into a melodic roar. It sings of culture and tradition. And it's been calling us, tempting us to listen. To Antigua and Barbuda. The Caribbean is known for many things. Exotic islands, beautiful beaches, and its music. The many rhythmic styles of the Caribbean are easily recognizable. Steel pan, calypso, and reggae. But beneath the surface of these infectious musical styles that conjure images of sun, fun, and vacation is a complex arrangement of sound and story. I'm Marissa Neff, journalist and world traveler, and I'm chasing the rhythms of Caribbean music and lifestyle. To explore the differences between these styles of music and how over time they've blended into the very foundation of Caribbean culture, I've come to the twin island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. 1,300 miles east of Miami, these two islands have a history steeped in sugar trade, rum, and melody. I think all the islands had it because of, of, of the, the orange eclipse. It was a slavery thing, and it was an art form that was created for the slaves on the plantation to enjoy themselves so that the, 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 the massa, if you will, didn't understand what they're saying. It's a sort of double entendre, hidden lyrics, whatever. That's, that's what makes the better calypsos. I meet a veteran calypso musician at an oceanside restaurant called Beach Limers. The musician and owner is this soft-spoken, gentle soul, Scorpion. The non-Calypso Scorpion is nice. The Calypso Scorpion tends to have a sting to his lyrics and his music. And what are people singing about today in the Calypsos? Anything that's big in news will end up on the Calypso stage during the Calypso season. And that's why people go to Calypso, because they, 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 they get a sense of what's happening in the country. Even the politicians get a sense of their popularity, or lack thereof, based on what the Calypso is to say. Calypso is very popular in Antigua and Barbuda, so popular that musicians would compete annually to be road march champion during Antigua and Barbuda's carnival season. I was the first road march king of Antigua, local. What is a road march? I'm not sure. The most People popular keep talking song about played on the road during carnival. Scorpion introduces me to another Calypso legend here in Antigua and Barbuda. His name is Calypso Joe. Yeah, I was the first local road match. King the Boom Boom song was the most popular song on the road. What are the lyrics it, about? Actually, it's, it's a quote <laughs> of mine. We played, we, we danced together during carnival the previous year. Her name was Ella. I say, Ella, let go my hand. Let me jump in the band. Don't tell me it's a band so sweet coming down Market Street. And so the next year I started, I, I said, I'm going to win this road match there. And I say, Ella, Ella, let go my hand. Which is the same girl. Okay. Let me jump in the band. <laughs> I would need a little freedom from her this year, you know? What year was that? That was 1970. 1970? That's before you were an idea. <laughs> Antigua and Barbuda's musical influences have deep roots in African rhythms. And beyond that, you'll find that the British, who colonized the islands in the 1600s, have had a lasting effect on Antigua's culture. Richie, what is cricket? Tell cricket, me. Cricket, I don't know. 
You don't know? <laughs> You're the expert. Well, cricket is a beautiful game. I believe yeah. it was created by the British many, 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 many moons ago. Cricket is the sport of choice, and many players from here have represented the West Indies, like Richie Richardson. It has a lot of similarities to baseball. I started playing from the time I was born, <laughs> on the beach, you know. <laughs> you know, backyard, we were a colony of, of Britain. From the time, you, you know, you were born, you were exposed to the game, and, and it's, it's, it's very, very popular. He played during the 1980s and 90s, and eventually became the captain of the West Indies team that dominated the sport for many years. Beautiful strike by Richie Richardson. I find Richie playing a game of pickup cricket along with another Antiguan artist known as Menace. Break this down a little more, sand to the beach. What does that mean exactly? Sand to the beach is, 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 is a, a local term. Um, a, lot of, a lot of us in the Caribbean use it. Um, it, it is definitely simple as you're not taking excess to where there's, there's, there's a lot of. So you won't take sand to the beach because there's a lot of sand at the beach. You won't take a girlfriend to a party when there's a lot of girls at the party. Oh, I see. You won't see. take your boyfriend to a party when there's really? a lot of dudes at the party. Simple as that. That's simple. Eh? Like, you, you won't take rock to a mountain. You can see a lot of things. <laughs> I tend to mix the, the calypso where you tell a story, like in the sand to the beach. First, let me admit I have a problem going everywhere with my girlfriend. You can actually visualize what I'm trying to say to you. And that put it in the up tempo beat now that mix the calypso with the soca, and then you get the anti sound, I would say. They're definitely the many songs. The beaches around Barbuda are probably the most spectacular uh, in the world. The island of Barbuda sits about 30 miles north of Antigua and can be reached within 20 minutes by plane. During certain parts of the season, the sand on, on that beach turns pink. I have a sample of it here, and that is one of the unique features of the beaches right here in Barbuda. The island is also one of the few underdeveloped paradises in the Caribbean, making the Barbuda Bird Sanctuary an ideal habitat for more than 170 species. The, the magnificent frigate bird is one of the major attractions to Barbuda. The voice of an island is a blend of different harmonies, music, art, sports, and food. Combine them all together and you'll begin to enjoy the true taste of Antigua and Barbuda's story. Thank this you. Is what I call the good stuff. So this is saltfish and this is what we eat every Sunday. Mmm. That is really good. Back on Antigua, I'm introduced to Shermaine Jeremy. She's a well-known musician who's currently recording her next album. We meet at the Sugar Ridge Hotel. I started singing um, in high school, and that led to pageant. Two of the most notable ones, of course, being Miss Universe and Miss World. And there I won talent. Um, for and singing? For singing, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's what led la, to me creating an album. La, 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 la. Let me be the one. The funny thing is, I never saw myself as a pageant girl, even though eventually I got tagged that way. Right. I just wanted a stage right. where I could sing. Yeah. <laughs> I can be the one you hold on so is this where all the cool musicians in Antigua hang out? Sugar Ridge is known for putting our artists out there. You know, they've got this great lounge where we play live music, where I've performed several times myself. Charmaine offers to show me around Antigua, so we begin on the water with some of Antigua's friendliest residents. All right, ladies, welcome to Steel Ray City, Antigua. It's one of the friendliest places in the world. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> Why'd you leave? That was enough for me. I did as much as I could. You know what? I don't blame the stingrays. It's me. Okay. It's me. <laughs> God, they're gonna be like, Charmaine is such a sellout. <laughs> 
The island's best kept secret is probably kiteboarding at Jabot Beach. You know, the usual conditions are like anywhere from 15 to 20 knots, you know, nice flat water. A busy day for us is like 10 to 15 kiters, whereas like you go to other places and it's like 50 to 100 kiters. So, you know, kiting for me changed my life. Like as a young kid, I got into it super young and it kind of just consumed me. I've won a few, few things in um, Russia, I've won like best pick a trick. It's like take me all around the world. I've been to places like Europe, Czech Republic, you know, all over the world. And, you know, it's always good coming back home because in the conditions for what I do, it's just perfect. You know, it's a means of transportation. Once there's good wind, you can pretty much go wherever your body can physically take you. Antigua's history goes back to the Carib and Arawak Indians who first populated the island. Christopher Columbus landed here in 1493, but Europeans had a difficult time settling on the island until the 1600s. It was around this time that the island was becoming a thriving enterprise for a very important resource. This is Betty's Hope Sugar Plantation. This was one of Antigua's first and largest sugar plantations. Sugar was big business here for more than 300 years, but it's a business that was built on the backs of slaves. Slavery was abolished in 1843, and the sugar industry soon fell apart. We no longer have a sugar industry, but we do have something that is made from sugar. Ooh. And what's that? The Antiguan rum. Shermaine and I head over to the Antigua Distillery Limited's very own rum tasting room, where we meet my new friend, Calbert. So, let's taste some more. The molasses that came from our estate was called Fancy Molasses locally, or what was called Muscovado Molasses. Cheers. And that gave rise to our first product, Muscovado Cavalier Rum. We sample a five-year and a 10-year oak barrel aged rum and both were delicious. <laughs> Finally, we tried the 25 year. 1981 represents the year Antigua gained independence. And the rum inside of this bottle is the last remaining rum from the original still that was at the distillery when we first started in 1932. To think that someone had the willpower to let rum sit for this long is mind boggling. I'm not gonna let their efforts go to waste. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, that one's good. I really like that one. Here's a bottle of our Muscovado Cavalier rum. We got this from an, an old friend. It was sitting in his cellar. And this bottle has been around since the 1940s. This is the last of the Muscovado Cavalier rum probably on the island. We're not far from downtown St. John's, the largest city in Antigua and Barbuda. St. John's is the economic hub of the island and where Carnival is held every year. We head to the market to do a little shopping. Fresh fish, fruits, and vegetables can be found here, including the Antiguan black pineapple. While shopping, Shermaine makes a call to her good friend Claudette Peters. Welcome to the studios of Vibes FM. And we head over to Vibes FM to meet her. Hi, Shermaine. Hi. How, How are, you? are you? I'm good. It's so good to see you. It's been so long. It's been too long. You're yes. here at Vibes FM. Yes. What's going on? <laughs> We're here to see you. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So, you got it, you got it. Along with hosting a morning show on Vibes FM, Claudette is a veteran musician and performer here in Antigua. So I take the opportunity to learn a little more about her musical roots. Of course, you know in those days, you have to go to church with grandma like on a Sunday you'd go to church like three times during the week you probably go every day and um, we'd have um, Sunday school and you know you would basically go up into in front of the church and, and probably recite a memory verse or something I would be the one singing From the first time I met you the business for quite some time. I have to make sure that I come up to par with the, you know, folks. And the music has changed and, yeah. and the yes. sound has changed yes. some bit. And so I had to basically go with the flow. Yeah. Claudette explained that there are artists on the island who are experimenting with the sound of Antiguan music. She recommends meeting a musician who's both famous and infamous for his hypnotic rhythms and live performances. We head to his studio where he's finishing the mix on his latest track. Well, I'm planning to go out a little bit 
you know, on, on, on a limb here. Unku has won the Antiguan Road March twice as a solo artist and five times as member of the Burning Flames. He agrees to show us his latest and song. Doing something fresh, new, different, but you will feel it. You must feel it. <laughs> Red Hot Nation! So hot! So hot! Sounds yeah. pretty complex. Yeah. Um, it's actually one person. So just to give you a, an idea how this works, I could sit right, right here. Yes. Cut the music. So hot. That's me. So hot. So hot. That's me again. So hot. That's me again. But the the so the, hot the engine, you know, so hot for the song. It make you is the the rhythm. And I'm higher. All this is coming together, you know. Doing that to feel, feel it, feel it. Riding. Let's start getting the instruments. The synthesizer. And I think because of the, the, the foundation of the song, the foundation of the, the music, the beat, it makes you dance. And it's very, it's very important when you're creating music of the day. Where does the name Unku come from? From birth and um, somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody said something out of the way and it stuck. And that, that, that's the way nicknames are formed. And nicknames seem pretty important in Antigua. Pretty, pretty, pretty important. Actually, a nickname could be more popular than your real name. Well, I'm determined to get a nickname before I leave oh, you Antigua. <laughs> you might have to help me with that. Oh, no, that, that would be no problem. <laughs> you know, I call it Curly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good nickname. I like it, Curly. You like Curly? Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> The game of Wari, as you see, it's played on a board, six holes on each side, two in the end, which are the housing for the captured seeds. And incidentally, the greatest players in the world are right here in Antigua. The game actually came from Africa during the time of the slave trade. And apparently, you cannot quote me on this, it used to settle incidences where there was an impasse. The kings of each village would get together and play a game of Wawi, and the winner would then make a decision as to what happened. And the game has continued on through Antigua, where mainly at the taxi stands, the bus stations, the airport, you could see guys playing Wawi each and every day. It's, you know, the greatest board game there is. The music of the Caribbean has always found its roots in the spirituals and hymns of the church. Jesus will walk with me down to the valley. Jesus will walk with me over the plain. Antigua and Barbuda have a large number of churches on the islands, and it's possible that Antigua's call and response style of music came from the early church hymns that were brought to the island. To find out more, I reach out to one of the young, up-and-coming gospel artists on the island. There's something inside me that burns on the inside. There's something inside Romancia me. Kingston blends her soulful voice with a modern sound on her latest single, Hallelujah. It makes me say... I meet Romancia on the northeast part of Antigua, a remote and wild area known as Devil's Bridge. 
The bridge's name comes from the stories of slaves who would walk to this part of the island from nearby plantations and throw themselves into the sea to escape the bondage of slavery. The bridge was carved out over thousands of years by the crashing waves of the Atlantic Ocean. It's here that Romancia begins to sing a powerful hymn. Antigua is known as a very religious nation. We have a lot of churches. We have a lot of different churches. Gonna study no more. I ain't gonna study and it is truly a foundation of everything that this nation is built on. And we're very happy to share with everyone. From a young age, I grew up in church, and you know, it has just been a very great encouragement to me. You know, it has kept me humble. Historically, our background and our roots is truly gospel. It's where we started from our Negro spirituals and folk songs and it built and it built to our Calypso and Soka. It has truly been a foundation to the music that we have in our nation today. Overlooking the south part of the island is Shirley Heights. It's here that the island as a whole comes to celebrate young and old, locals and tourists, and the view is absolutely stunning. Everyone gathers to witness one of the most spectacular sunsets in the Caribbean. Perched above English Harbor, I see familiar faces and dance with new friends. It's here that I finally connect with the culture. I'm no longer a visitor, no longer a guest. It's here where everyone feels that they belong. And out of nowhere, the muse of Antigua makes one last appearance. tell me later that it's been almost 15 years since he's performed at Shirley Heights. But tonight, it feels like it's everyone's first time. We laugh, dance, and move to Unku's powerful rhythms. We party into the night. We celebrate. It's here that one can feel at home, away from home. At this moment, I hear the music calling, loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> 